Okay, so now we're going to talk about um, different ways to move out of Illustrator for um, other formats or other applications besides Photoshop. Um, and we're going to focus on web, print, and motion design, since that's kind of what um, worlds we're involved with in media arts. So this first document that I have open here, I have, um, it's a document that was prepared for uh, film and television. It's an NTSC DV widescreen format. That is just a preset that I did from the new menu, and I chose video and film, NTSC DV widescreen. And generally, that gives you a new document that has um, the transparency grid and all these uh, guides and stuff. And I don't know if you remember me talking about artboards and all that stuff. That's just something that you can turn off um, by, well, first I can get rid of the transparency grid by going to view, hide transparency grid. That takes me back to my white world. Uh, the ruler that we see here is um, hide video rulers, okay. And then these guys are all part of the artboard setup. So I click on the artboard function and I say show center mark, click. Show crosshairs, click. Show video safe areas, click. All those things can go away if you don't want them. Um, but that's one of those weird presets that comes with um, opening up a TV or film or film or video uh, document. Go away. Don't save. Um, uh, whatever. I, I got rid of a few things and left a few things on because it doesn't matter here. All I'm talking about is exporting like the big old letters say. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk us through several different ways to save files from Illustrator um, for different purposes. First I'm going to talk about moving into video. So like let's say I was going to take this um, into After Effects because I wanted to work with this graphic. And it was easier for me to create this graphic in Illustrator than it would be in uh, After Effects. So generally, if I were to just like save this, um, I'll just do a save as, and I'll make it an Illustrator file. Uh, I already have one of those here. Well, I don't have to worry about saving it. Anyways, if I just saved it as an Illustrator file, and um, I want to take it to After Effects or another program like that, um, I have to keep in mind my artboard. And currently my artboard is this black line that kind of goes around the edge here. I'll zoom in a little bit so we can see it. This black line is my artboard. My art currently exceeds the boundary of my artboard. And that becomes a problem with some other applications. So if I were to go to a program like After Effects and import my uh, Illustrator file, here's a composition in After Effects. You don't have to know After Effects to follow me here. Just It's important that you understand what the deal is. Um, this Illustrator file is brought in as footage. And at this point, it looks great, right? I could... Um, turn on my continual rasterization. Oh, really? This is a problem. I moved things. Stand by. Replace footage with a file. Exporting. Illustrator. Okay, looks good. All right. So now this is an Illustrator file. I can zoom in as far as I want and it maintains beautiful clarity great edges, great curves, and that's the magic of working with Illustrator, vector art files with other programs like After Effects. If this were to become a 
motion graphic piece, then I can pretty much guarantee that my edges will be flawless and everything's going to be just gorgeous as opposed to a raster file created in Photoshop where I cannot exceed my 100% scale. However, if I zoom in side of 100%, you can see the problem. The E and the G are not completely incorporated in this graphic. That's because in Illustrator, they exceeded the boundaries of my artboard. So if I'm preparing anything that I want to use in a program like After Effects, I have to make sure that all of the artwork that I want to incorporate is going to be found within the boundaries of my artboard, which is why I'm a big fan of working with documents. I usually go to web and I usually pick the biggest one that I can or I'll even go bigger. I might go 2000 by um, you know 1500 or something like that. Just because it's big, so I'll go 2000 by 1500. It's big. I have that word exporting or any other graphics in here. It could be, it's not fill, um, 2.0, okay. Any of this good stuff. Why did I not? Oh, because it was no stroke. There we go. So any of this within my boundaries of the artboard will come in, but here's a little corner right there. Boop, that's not going to go into After Effects. Won't be happy. But at this point, everything that I have, if this were saved as an Illustrator file, um, after Effects will love, or any other program that, that allows you to bring in Illustrator files to use. So if I ran into this problem, you know, I just have to go back and make sure that that document had uh, be, there we go, had all the artwork within the boundaries of my Yep. Artboard. If I hit save, I'll come back. There. So now After Effects likes it because the elements were found within the constraints of that artboard. So artboards become very important when working with some other programs. Not all of them, and not all file formats. So in this case, it's just an Illustrator format. It'd be the same if it were an EPS format. We'll talk about EPS in a, in a few minutes. Um, but But here... Uh, just to remind everybody, the artboard does matter. And there will be times when you're saving as a different format and it'll ask you if you want the artboard to be a part of it or not. But if you choose not to, then it won't even care. Anything outside the artboard won't matter. But here, um, just in this straight up Illustrator or EPS uh, format for going to some programs, things need to be found within the constraints of your artboard. Um, all right, well, I think I'll call that quits on this video. We'll move on to exporting other formats just so we don't have a super long video to have to deal with.